AMD's new 800 series of chipsets for Socket AM5 have landed. And when we look at the MSI range of motherboards at the top of the stack, as expected, we have the almost certainly horribly expensive Godlike. Below the Godlike, we would expect to see the replacement for this Meg X670E Ace. But no, with the 800 series, the Ace would appear to have vanished. So the new Ace in the MSI range is this MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. Instead of paying around £700 for an MSI Meg Ace, now you're looking at sub £500 for the MPG Carbon Wi-Fi. This is a review of the MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard rather than the AMD X870E chipset. Kit Guru did a news update about the new 800 series chipsets precisely because they are not new chipsets. They are new names for existing chipsets. Well, perhaps AMD has updated the silicon and hasn't told us, but the features of the chipsets remain unchanged. What is new is the mandatory inclusion of USB 4 on the motherboards. And it will be obvious to you that any motherboard manufacturer could have included USB 4 with their 600 series motherboards had they chosen. It's the mandatory part that makes 800 new, specifically X870E and X870. The other motherboards in the range may include USB 4 if the manufacturers choose. My point here is that anything interesting about this motherboard is down to MSI rather than AMD. So let's dig into the new features of which there are a great many with the MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. As you would expect, MSI talks about the aesthetics of the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. And as the name suggests, it features a carbon black color scheme. And naturally, we have Mystic Light RGB lighting. And you will notice on the test bench here, I have this Seasonic Focus GX1000 ATX 3.1 power supply in white which gives you a contrast to the black motherboard. Whether you like the black and white contrast is not the point in this case. It is that you will note there's an extra cable down the foot of the board and being white, it stands out quite clearly. We also have the 12 volt two by six power connection ready for the graphics card. And this is significant in the sense that MSI talks a great deal about power delivery on this motherboard. The VRMs are 18 plus two plus one, and that's 18 by 110 amps feeding to the CPU. It's ready for ATX 3.1, which is code for NVIDIA 50 series graphics cards. And we have supplemental power connections on the main power connector and also at the foot of the board. This power can be fed to the fans, the RGB and to the graphics. Now to my way of thinking, AMD AM5 doesn't require a huge amount of power. When you think back to Zen 4 16 core processors, they took just over 200 watts which is a fair amount, but it doesn't require this kind of VRM. And Ryzen 9000 requires less power than Ryzen 7000. To my mind, the VRM on the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi is overkill. Of course, I don't mind high-end hardware. I just don't particularly want to pay extra for something we don't really need. But there's absolutely no arguing that this motherboard is ready for any processor that AMD can throw at it. In terms of other features, the number five crops up, the latest DDR5 memory and Lightning Gen 5 PCI Express, including for storage, two of the M.2 slots are Gen 5 and two of them are Gen 4. You also have the latest connectivity. The Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 7 and MSI makes bold claims that their Wi-Fi 7 is especially good and dual ethernet. 5 gigabit and 2.5 and gigabit. On the I.O. panel, as already mentioned, we have USB 4, along with a whole host of other ports and connectors. 
On the rear I.O. we have two USB 4s rated at 40 gigabits per second and two USB C's rated at 10 gigabits per second. There's an internal header for a USB C rated at 20 gigabits per second for a front panel connection. Internally we also have connections for four USB Type A's rated at 5 gigabits per second and four old school USB 2s. On the rear I.O. panel we have nine USB Type A's rated at 10 gigabits per second. Also on the rear I.O. we have a full size HDMI in case you're using integrated graphics, the dual ethernet we've mentioned, connection points for the Wi-Fi 7 antennae, and 7.1 channel audio connections. We have three micro buttons on the rear panel for flashing the BIOS, clearing the BIOS, and also a smart button that can be configured in different ways. The buttons are very useful, but they're too close together for comfort. Moving to the expansion slots, the primary is PCI Express Gen 5 by 16, and that's fed from the CPU. The secondary slot is PCI Express Gen 5 times 4, also fed by the CPU. The third slot, PCI Express Gen 4 by 16, fed by the chipset. For storage, we have the two M.2 Gen 5 by 4 and two M.2 Gen 4 by 4, along with four SATA 6 gigabit per second. MSI is putting quite an emphasis on ease of installation of your components. So let's take a look, for example, at M.2 installation. As it says, push and lift. You'll note we have contacts because you can be confident there's gonna be RGB in this component. Easy as that, and snap the cover back on, and that shield froze a two in action. This larger heatsink covers the other three SSDs. I've already removed the tape covering the thermal pads in the second SSD position, and you can see the third and fourth I've not yet used. And if we transfer the SSD from the primary position, we'll find that installation in these positions is even easier. There's just this clever little pop pin that goes in place. Wibble it to one side, out it comes. Okay, let's put this heatsink back. And this heatsink. And now the graphics card. And then when the time comes to release your graphics card, press that button. Easy PCI release, and I can show you that. Nice and simple. Uh, it does seem to me they might do well to change the color of that button to make it stand out slightly more inside your PC case. After all, this is on a flat test bench, nice and straightforward. Once it's in your PC, perhaps not so obvious. But those features I like. I also like the debug display for the BIOS and the power and reset buttons on the board. Always handy when you're setting up your PC for the first time on the test bench. But of course, once you've installed your motherboard, this hardware vanishes from view. When you have your PC running, the first job is to open up the BIOS and take a look at settings. At the very least, you want to enable AMD's Expo for the memory. And here we see that MSI has given the BIOS a complete overhaul and we like the new look. More importantly, you have simple one-click functions to, for example, configure the smart button. You can also easily work with Precision Boost Overdrive. Normally, you have to either dig into the BIOS or work with AMD's Ryzen Master software, and you can see how easy it is to set a thermal limit, for example, capping the CPU to 75 Celsius. When we reviewed the various Zen 5 processors, we found they ran very cool on very little power. As you can see, Zen 4 processors are a different story. Here we have a Ryzen 9 7950X running in Cinebench, and it runs as fast as it possibly can with the temperature up at 95 degrees Celsius. However, if we set the thermal limit to 75 degrees in the BIOS and run Cinebench again, you can see the temperature drops 20 degrees Celsius, exactly to that 75 degrees limit, and the clock speed barely changes. We figured the MPGX870E carbon Wi-Fi would be aimed at Zen 5 owners, but actually it would appear that Zen 4 owners should also be looking at this motherboard. As a world leading manufacturer, CyberPowered PC UK expertly builds each PC with the largest range of parts available in the UK. 
We handle all your packages with care and ship them directly to you on next day delivery. Visit cyberpowersystem.co.uk. Before I get into my benchmark testing with the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi, let's just check out that USB 4 feature, which is after all the new part of this chipset. I bought this Ugreen M.2 enclosure, which is rated for Thunderbolt and USB 4. Quite expensive, cost about £100. And I've installed this Kingston Fury uh, SSD, which is Gen 4. And then let's just close that up. And now we have an enclosure with four terabytes of M.2 storage and a wickedly fast USB-C interface. I ran Crystal Disk Mark first on the Mega Ace X670E. You can see here the figures for the 10 gigabit a second connection, and this is the faster 20 gigabits per second connection. And then we switch over to the new MPG X870E carbon Wi Fi, and first we use the 10 gigabit per second interface, and then we use the brand new USB 4 40 gigabit per second interface. And the figures are very slightly slower than we saw on that 20 gigabit per second interface. I think I'm going to have to revisit USB 4 at a later date as we get more devices and as drivers mature. But right now I have to say the brand new USB 4 feature, it doesn't look quite so enthralling. We're going to work through some performance charts. However, they will demonstrate that this X870E chipset is exactly the same as the X670E chipset. It's not the chipset that makes any difference. It's the BIOS and the AGISA code that is used to form that BIOS and the memory that you use, also the version of Windows. We've covered these points in a number of videos recently. It's also worth pointing out that today we've had news that Windows 11 24H2 is finally going to start rolling out. Whether that's going to be any different to the version of Windows 11 23H2 that currently exists, don't know. We have a Ryzen 7 9700X CPU. I've done a lot of testing with various Ryzen 7s recently. Obviously that's the Zen 5 part. The memory that is installed is this G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo DDR5 6000. And I've used that a lot recently. Works absolutely superbly with Expo enabled. I also have this memory which is G-Skill Trident Z5 Royal Neo. That is DDR5 8000. And until very recently, the 8000 was a poor choice because you required the correct Agisa to support it. We now have it. It is Agisa 1202. So many words. And now it's time for some benchmarks. Our first chart shows Cinebench R23 multi-core. We've highlighted a number of figures for Ryzen 9 9950X, Ryzen 9 7950X, and Ryzen 7 9700X. And there's absolutely nothing to separate X670 from X870. However, if we zoom into these figures for the Ryzen 9s, so we have two figures for Ryzen 9 9950X, and we see the clock speeds and the power draw for the processor are absolutely identical on the two chipsets. However, the X870E scores very slightly higher. You'll notice the temperature of the processor is lower, 71C versus 74C. The benchmarking was done on two different days. Ambient temperature is slightly lower. I'm quite sure that is why there is a tiny difference in the measured figures. Moving down to Ryzen 9 7950X, this is somewhat more interesting. The first figure shows the processor running on the MSI X870E. It's running on auto, drawing 229 watts and a temperature of 95 degrees C. The figure below that shows the Ryzen 9 7950X running on an MSI X670E. The figures are the same, the performance is almost identical, the temperature again 95C. The figure at the bottom is that run that I showed you earlier in this video where I'd restricted the temperature to 75 degrees C. This is on the MSI X870E. You can see the power draw is reduced to 192 watts. The clock speed is down fractionally and yet the impact on performance is utterly trivial. So the chart doesn't show you much about performance it does show you a certain amount about the behavior of the processors on these motherboards. And we move on to ADA64 memory bandwidth. As I say time after time, this is more a benchmark of the memory than the platform, and the highlighted figures with blue are all Ryzen 7 9700X. 
Diving deeper into those figures, we're looking first at the Ryzen 7 with DDR5-8000 on the MSI X670E, followed by DDR5-8000 on the MSI X870E. Realistically, the separation there is very slight. Below that, we have DDR5-6000 on the X670E, bottom of the chart, DDR5-6000 on the X870E. It feels like this MSI MPG X870E carbon Wi-Fi wants you to use faster memory. And we move on to some gaming benchmarks. Far Cry 6 at 1080p, a whole load of different Ryzen 7s. Top of the chart, Ryzen 7 9700X running DDR5-8000 on this X870E. And it's followed by the X870E with DDR5-6000. The third figure in the chart is interesting. This is the X670E Meg Ace from MSI. It's running the same version of Windows. We have VBS enabled. We have DDR5-8000. The performance definitely falls back from the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. I don't have an explanation for that, but once again, it feels like this new motherboard likes new memory. Perhaps the BIOS for the Meg X670E Ace doesn't do quite such a good job. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1080p. Not a lot of separation between any of the runs here. Top of the chart, we have the Ryzen 7 9700X with DDR5-8000, and it's running on the Meg Ace X670E. Behind that, by a miserable one frame per second in the 1% lows, we have the processor with DDR5-8000 on this new X870E. And behind that, we see the impact of the slower memory. In practice, we have to say it's a tie between the two runs at the top of the chart. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p. Loads of Ryzen 7s in this one. Top of the chart, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with DDR4. What can you say? It does well. You can also see the 1% lows are less impressive than the other processors. Behind that, we have the Ryzen 7 9700X on the X870E motherboard with DDR5-8000. Behind that is the Ryzen 7 9700X on the X670E with DDR5-8000. The difference here is the motherboard and the chipset and of course the BIOS, 7 FPS difference. Again, it looks as though this new MPG X870E carbon Wi-Fi loves fast memory. And finally, we come to Cyberpunk 2077. Top of the chart, Ryzen 7 7800X 3D with DDR5-6000. And then in second and third places, effectively tying, we have the Ryzen 7 9700X on the X670E and the X870E, both with DDR5-8000. And with the MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi running, we can reach my conclusion to this review. Pros and cons, the good points. You get a superb array of ports and connectors. MSI's new BIOS layout is very good. You've got tool-free installation of M.2 SSDs and add-in devices. Cons, the negative points. This board is relatively expensive. Having said that, if you think of it as a cheap ace, it's pretty good value. But still, the ticket price is slightly on the high side. And USB 4, the alleged new feature, offers minimal immediate advantage over 20 gigabit per second USB Type-C. I'm torn when it comes to the score. I was wavering 8.5 or 9. I've settled finally at 9 out of 10 and must have. Head over to kickguru.net to read our reviews and we're on TikTok as well.